today I'm mostly butchering my pod. A um, number of things wrong with it, lots of um, inspection holes, uh, that was for a nose light, landing light, inspection holes for the uh, joystick, inspection holes around the other side as well for the, the uh, throttle. I've been peeling it off with a bit of heat and a, and a chisel but um, it's pretty fragile, very easy to damage, it's already got some damage um, and I'd have to patch all of these holes so I've more or less decided to make a new one out of carbon fibre using Hotel Tango as uh, a plug to make a um, glass fibre mould into which I'll lay carbon fibre. It's obviously had a nose leg um, accident in the past and that this has been reinforced with a bit of fibre lam inside the pod and glass fibre on the outside. Uh, no inspection hatch though. I've been able to look inside the, um, the landing light hole in here and it, it's a bit of a bodge. In fact, the, I don't know if you can see that, but the the nose leg, nose leg isn't on straight, it's crooked, so I should be remed remedying that. Let me just turn it over. Here we are, so um, this has been damaged in taking it off and, and it was damaged before. There are bits of plywood on, on the inside, bits of filler all over the place, so I think it's well worth making a new one um, and I haven't even started taking it off the instrument panel yet so that's going to be tricky without doing further damage um, I, and I shall probably fit a new instrument panel with no holes in it as I won't need a, all of those instruments well I got that off that's a bit of plywood um, stuck on the, the pod, the nose cone, just to cover the gaping hole after the nose leg had been repaired internally with fibre lamin and more plywood I think. So it was crudely riveted on and then uh, glassed over. There's the plywood on the inside. So job done. Well I eventually got it off. That wasn't too difficult in the end. Bit of heat from a from a heat gun and uh, a spatula and chisels, but it's obviously been off before to uh, repair the nose leg. Um, so when it was put back on again, um, it was repaired, and there is. Um, there was some very fine glass cloth put over the weakened part along the edges on the outside and then filled. So that's why it's really in such a poor state. It's been off before. All sorts of repairs, um, bits of uh, plywood and over the other side and also bits of filler stuffed in from the outside and squeegeed in. I did re remove the uh, foam block down the front of the nose to save weight. It's quite a few grams of weight uh, and as far as I can tell it's not really needed. It doesn't uh, strengthen anything. So I should be do doing that again, putting the pito right on the nose. By the way, if anybody does want uh, a damaged pod, it can be restored. Um, it may be better than a lot of pods on shadow, so it's free to whoever wants to collect it in pool. I also found out what these yellow paint spots were. I thought they'd been applied in the factory to protect the hard points, but that's from the is but that didn't really make sense. It's because there were so many inspection holes in the 
either in the pod, the nose cone, or the plywood side panniers. Uh, and the fuselage were painted yellow, so whoever painted it yellow sprayed straight through the holes onto the fiber lamp. And I've just discovered a new way of saving weight. Um, the epoxy that glues these fins on for the, for the nose leg attachment. Well, it's been um, a spatula or something's been used, or a screwdriver, to force the glue into the into the join, but in doing so it squidged some of it out so it forms a ridge away from the joint which is providing no strength, no additional strength, but it is adding weight. And we've got glue squidged here so there's an awful lot of glue that can be just heated up and scraped away. Uh, which I've done with this side. And of course in repairing this nose leg excess glue has been used so that's more weight that can be pared away and also inside I imagine yes you can see that there's a patch here not been done terribly well it, it's not the five alarm's not been overlapped on this side it's just been put in to plug the gap and again there's one at the top of the nose leg I guess that got really damaged in, in the nose leg accident that it had so that's just a plug put in from the outside I'll just show how easy this is to um, pair off We are, I'll weigh all of this uh, debris in a minute. After pairing off all the excess glue around here, this is what I removed, and it adds up to 100 grams. So useful saving. This is the other side of that um, patch, which was just uh, a plug I've shown earlier on the other side so it's a plug of fibre lamb you can see it's just been inserted here not very expertly big gaps you can see where the hole has been drilled out at the corners and then cut out with a saw so it's been plugged and then a skin of fibre lamb has been placed over the the patch and glued on it's not the best way to repair a fibre lamb, um, a bit of fibre lamb damage. The best way is to cut the skin back this side, put an oversized plug in, uh, connect it to the skin on the underside and then oversail the skin of the the patch that's going on over uh, the rest of the fibre lamb here. So in effect you're laminating the, the skin either side of the the uh, fibre lamp sheet much stronger and this um, is obviously a repair when the nose leg was uh, pulled out I guess a landing accident so this is uh, 
here to find out what this is. I think it's probably plywood, but uh, we'll see in a second. Well, this turned out to be not plywood, but uh, another skin of five lamb. The reason I thought it was plywood was because it looked much thicker, but it was just the thickness of glue underneath it. So, peel that away. This is the five lamb patch that was put in. Again, it's just a plug. But there is some reinforcement of fibre on the other side on this one. So it was a reasonably strong repair. Um, and to get it out, I drilled all the way around. It wasn't pretty, but it had to be done. Um, so it's no longer attached to the top here. But down the bottom, of course, it's still glued in. Um, but I think some heat now, and I'll be able to rotate it, take it out. Well, that was quite satisfying. Um, I used a hot air gun on the actual leg, not on the fibre lamb itself. Um, Alumine is a good, good conductor of heat, so it just travelled all around the leg. And at the same time, I was trying to turn it from the top with a pair of stiltons, stiltsons, being careful not to crush the tube, and it eventually went. So, it's pretty hot, so here we go, it's rotating. Let's take the stiltsons off. Yeah, it's loose enough to pull out now, so I'll do that. There we are. It's still a bit warm, but uh, came out cleanly without any damage, which is lucky because that's um, welded around the top there. Uh, not an easy thing to have reproduced. Reasonably clean hole there. there are two layers of fibre lamp here, but with Hotel Tango, I put an additional ring of plywood around it, 6mm plywood, just to give a bit more strength. I'll have to sort out the uh, the top hole of course. Um, a couple of patches in there which I can just take out and then redo properly and make sure that the leg is uh, standing upright this time. It was, it was wonky, it was over to one side. What I also did on Hotel Tango was to um, laminate some carbon fibre over the side walls here. They normally buckle um, in a serious incident. They buckle here. Break. Uh, so I, I laminated some carbon fibre over here, carried it over the top as well to lock everything in place and to provide a bit more strength. I also did a bit on the inside face, uh, just to form a, an L-shaped bracket, an L-shaped um, lamination to reinforce the connection with the floor as well. 